A cellular automaton is a discrete model studied in computability theory, mathematics, physics, complexity science, theoretical biology and microstructure modeling. Cellular automata are also called cellular spaces, tessellation automata, homogeneous structures, cellular structures, tessellation structures, and iterative arrays. A cellular automaton consists of a regular grid of cells, each in one of a finite number of states, such as on and off. The grid can be in any finite number of dimensions. For each cell, a set of cells called its neighborhood is defined relative to the specified cell. An initial state is selected by assigning a state for each cell. A new generation is created, according to some fixed rule that determines the new state of each cell in terms of the current state of the cell and the states of the cells in its neighborhood. Typically, the rule for updating the state of cells is the same for each cell and does not change over time, and is applied to the whole grid simultaneously, though exceptions are known, such as the stochastic cellular automaton and asynchronous cellular automaton. The concept was originally discovered in the 1940s by Stanislaw Ulam and John von Neumann while they were contemporaries at Los Alamos National Laboratory. While studied by some throughout the 1950s and 1960s, it was not until the 1970s in Conway's Game of Life, a two-dimensional cellular automaton, that interest in the subject expanded beyond academia. In the 1980s, Stephen Wolfram engaged in a systematic study of one-dimensional cellular automata, or what he calls elementary cellular automata. His research assistant Matthew Cook showed that one of these rules is Turing complete. Wolfram published A New Kind of Science in 2002, claiming that cellular automata have applications in many fields of science. These include computer processes and cryptography. The primary classifications of cellular automata, as outlined by Wolfram, are numbered 1 to 4. They are, in order, automata in which patterns generally stabilize into homogeneity, automata in which patterns evolve into mostly stable or oscillating structures, automata in which patterns evolve in a seemingly chaotic fashion, and automata in which patterns become extremely complex and may last for a long time, with stable local structures. This last class are thought to be computationally universal, or capable of simulating a Turing machine. Special types of cellular automata are reversible, where only a single configuration leads directly to a subsequent one, and totalistic, in which the future value of individual cells depend on the total value of a group of neighboring cells. Cellular automata can simulate a variety of real-world systems, including biological and chemical ones. Overview One way to simulate a two-dimensional cellular automaton is with an infinite sheet of graph paper along with a set of rules for the cells to follow. Each square is called its cell, and each cell has two possible states, black and white. The neighborhood of a cell is the nearby, usually adjacent, cells. The two most common types of neighborhoods are the von Neumann neighborhood and the Moore neighborhood. The former, named after the founding cellular automaton theorist, consists of the four orthogonally adjacent cells. The latter includes the von Neumann neighborhood as well as the four remaining cells surrounding the cell whose state is to be calculated. For such a cell and its Moore neighborhood, there are 512 possible patterns. For each of the 512 possible patterns, the rule table would state whether the center cell will be black or white on the next time interval. Conway's Game of Life is a popular version of this model. Another common neighborhood type is the extended von Neumann neighborhood, which includes the two closest cells in each orthogonal direction. For a total of eight, the general equation for such a system of rules is KKS, where K is the number of possible states for a cell, and S is the number of neighboring cells used to determine the cell's next state. It is usually assumed that every cell in the universe starts in the same state. 
except for a finite number of cells in other states. The assignment of state values is called a configuration. More generally, it is sometimes assumed that the universe starts out covered with a periodic pattern, and only a finite number of cells violate that pattern. The latter assumption is common in one-dimensional cellular automata. Cellular automata are often simulated on a finite grid rather than an infinite one. In two dimensions, the universe would be a rectangle instead of an infinite plane. The obvious problem with finite grids is how to handle the cells on the edges. How they are handled will affect the values of all the cells in the grid. One possible method is to allow the values in those cells to remain constant. Another method is to define neighborhoods differently for these cells. One could say that they have fewer neighbors, but then one would also have to define new rules for the cells located on the edges. These cells are usually handled with a toroidal arrangement. When one goes off the top, one comes in at the corresponding position on the bottom, and when one goes off the left, one comes in on the right. This can be visualized as taping the left and right edges of the rectangle to form a tube, then taping the top and bottom edges of the tube to form a torus. Universes of other dimensions are handled similarly. This solves boundary problems with neighborhoods, but another advantage is that it is easily programmable using modular arithmetic functions. For example, in a one-dimensional cellular automaton like the examples below, the neighborhood of a cell xit is she minus 1 t minus 1, xit minus 1, she plus 1 t minus 1, where t is the time step, and i is the index in one generation. History Stanislaw Ulam, while working at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in the 1940s, studied the growth of crystals using a simple lattice network as his model. At the same time, John von Neumann, Ulam's colleague at Los Alamos, was working on the problem of self-replicating systems. Von Neumann's initial design was founded upon the notion of one robot building another robot. This design is known as the kinematic model. As he developed this design, von Neumann came to realize the great difficulty of building a self-replicating robot, and of the great cost in providing the robot with a sea of parts from which to build its replicant. Newman read a paper entitled The General and Logical Theory of Automata at the Hicks and Symposium in 1948. Ulam was the one who suggested using a discrete system for creating a reductionist model of self-replication. Nils Aall Baricelli performed many of the earliest explorations of these models of artificial life. Ulam and von Neumann created a method for calculating liquid motion in the late 1950s. The driving concept of the method was to consider a liquid as a group of discrete units and calculate the motion of each based on its neighbors' behaviors. Thus was born the first system of cellular automata. Like Ulam's lattice network, von Neumann's cellular automata are two-dimensional, with his self-replicator implemented algorithmically. The result was a universal copier and constructor working within a cellular automaton with a small neighborhood, and with 29 states per cell. Von Neumann gave an existence proof that a particular pattern would make endless copies of itself within the given cellular universe by designing a 200,000 cell configuration that could do so. This design is known as the tessellation model, and is called a von Neumann universal constructor. Also in the 1940s, Norbert Wiener and Arturo Rosenbluth developed a model of excitable media with some of the characteristics of a cellular automaton. Their specific motivation was the mathematical description of impulse conduction in cardiac systems. However, their model is not a cellular automaton because the medium in which signals propagate is continuous, and wave fronts are curves. A true cellular automaton model of excitable media was developed and studied by J. M. Greenberg and S. 
P. Hastings in 1978, C. Greenberg Hastings Cellular or Tom Eaton. The original work of Wiener and Rosenbluth contains many insights and continues to be cited in modern research publications on cardiac arrhythmia and excitable systems. In the 1960s, Cellular automata were studied as a particular type of dynamical system and the connection with the mathematical field of symbolic dynamics was established for the first time. In 1969, Gustave Hedlund compiled many results following this point of view in what is still considered as a seminal paper for the mathematical study of cellular automata. The most fundamental result is the characterization in the Curtis Hedlund Linden theorem of the set of global rules of cellular automata as the set of continuous endomorphisms of shift spaces. In 1969, German computer pioneer Konrad Zuse published his book Calculating Space, proposing that the physical laws of the universe are discrete by nature, and that the entire universe is the output of a deterministic computation on a single cellular automaton. Zuse's theory became the foundation of the field of study called digital physics. In the 1970s a two-state, two-dimensional cellular automaton named Game of Life became widely known, particularly among the early computing community. Invented by John Conway and popularized by Martin Gardner in a Scientific American article, its rules are as follows. If a cell has two black neighbors, it stays the same. If it has three black neighbors, it becomes black. In all other situations it becomes white. Despite its simplicity, the system achieves an impressive diversity of behavior, fluctuating between apparent randomness and order. One of the most apparent features of the game of life is the frequent occurrence of gliders, arrangements of cells that essentially move themselves across the grid. It is possible to arrange the automaton so that the gliders interact to perform computations. And after much effort it has been shown that the game of life can emulate a universal Turing machine. It was viewed as a largely recreational topic, and little follow-up work was done outside of investigating the particularities of the game of life and a few related rules in the early 1970s. Stephen Wolfram independently began working on cellular automata in mid-1981 after considering how complex patterns seemed formed in nature in violation of the second law of thermodynamics. His investigations were initially spurred by an interest in modeling systems such as neural networks. He published his first paper in Reviews of Modern Physics Investigating Elementary Cellular Automata in June 1983. The unexpected complexity of the behavior of these simple rules led Wolfram to suspect that complexity in nature may be due to similar mechanisms. His investigations, however, led him to realize that cellular automata were poor at modeling neural networks. Additionally, during this period Wolfram formulated the concepts of intrinsic randomness and computational irreducibility, and suggested that Rule 110 may be universal, a fact proved later by Wolfram's research assistant Matthew Cook in the 1990s. In 2002 Wolfram published a 1280-page text A New Kind of Science which extensively argues that the discoveries about cellular automata are not isolated facts but are robust and have significance for all disciplines of science. Despite confusion in the press, the book did not argue for a fundamental theory of physics based on cellular automata, and although it did describe a few specific physical models based on cellular automata, it also provided models based on qualitatively different abstract systems.